talk about some of the really hard parts of it. I mean, we were on 24 seven. I mean, someone that I haven't mentioned yet who probably deserves to be mentioned right out the gate is Rick O'Hara, our COO. You know, when we, we started up Turtle Lake, I'll never forget when we sold our first pallet we had five employees, you know, one pallet. Now we make, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pallets. Uh, we had to go from five people running the plant when we could, whenever we had an order to a shift to two shifts. And then once we got enough demand, we had to run the plant every day of the week, 24 seven all the time. And that's a different thing. Uh, when you go on vacation or whatever, the plant's still moving. It's still happening. And that's complicated. Keeping the lights on, keeping the process going, keeping customers satisfied. You alluded to uh, some of the demand that we find. We've been sold out for five years in a row. And people are like, oh, that's a great problem. Like, no, no, it's a, it's a problem. It's not a great problem. It's terrible, actually, because every time we slip up, it costs our customers growth. And so what we've been doing is investing to get ahead of the market. So we have line of sight and visibility to keep building it out. So investing in the future before you've proven it today, next thing is hard to raise money. How do you get someone to believe in where you're going when it's not tangible just yet? And you rewind 10 years ago, pea protein was just an idea and we had investors come in and back us. I mean, Vega was our first big customer and Charles Chang, who was a partner at Puris and an investor in our company sold and invested a ton of capital into Puris so we could keep going. And then we knew we needed to build a new plant and go bigger. And Cargill said, you know what? We believe in you guys and gave us the capital to grow. And it just keeps happening one after the other people believing and enabling because the hard stuff is actually doing it, not just dreaming it up. And that to me is what really is exciting because you start seeing it happen day in and day out. And it's not, it's not Nicole and I, we're not doing it. It's all these other people that have chosen to make this happen and putting the work in. And it's truly, it's truly amazing to watch it go. And that's the hard stuff. Yeah, I, I remember some of the early days at Turtle Lake, some of the stories of our team there and the, our, pro, our group of process engineers at the time were a lot of them just out of school and they were running the plant sometimes 20 hours straight, four hour break, rest, and come back and keep at it. And I think that's the kind of like trial by fire that people went through in the hard times. And, and it creates a little bit of, I think, shared pain because they look at back at those times today and they're like, yeah, remember when we did that? And it's a little badge of honor too. Um, cause we made it through those times now there's, but those times still happen in, in this business. It's, it's an operations business at the end of the day. I think what the world sees is the marketing side of it. Um, but you know, you peel back the the top layer and it's, it's all operations and how do we, how do we run our plants efficiently, keep our people safe. And then you add COVID on top of that and it adds another layer of, of complication and, and risk, but our team manages through it. And it's done a really great job, I think, just keeping the eye on kind of eye on the end line, which is people need to eat. So our job is to make sure that they can. And, you know, when it comes to all the political discourse, that's one thing that Democrats and Republicans have in common. Everybody eats. And so that's just this kind of grounding factor that in the food industry, we can rise above some of that um, and fulfill what we need to do to keep our economies going.